Hi, in this video, I want to prove that there is no correlation ID between an access token issued by an authorization server to an OAuth client and the client itself. In other words, an application could receive an access token and then some other application or a malicious attacker could steal that access token and then once he has stolen the access token, he could use the access token from any other application and get data about the user as far as the access tokens scope will allow. This means, on the positive side, this means you could write a web application to get an access token on behalf of a user of your application from a resource server or from an authorization server. And then you could share that access token securely with another client application of yours, for example, a mobile client on Android application or an iOS application, and they could use it to get the same user's data, giving the user a uniform experience across all your client applications for your software product. But on the flip side, it also means this access token is vulnerable as there's no affinity between which client actually requested for and obtained this access token and the OAuth server itself. So if you were to have this access token stolen, for instance, when you browse the internet from unsecure public networks, like when you're on an airport or in a cafe or a coffee shop, uh, or in a public library, and if you're using their Wi-Fi, and if there's, it's very easy to stiff HTTP traffic, and somebody steals your access token, then you're toast. So I'm going to demonstrate that. The first thing I'm going to do is pull out an old access token I received by using the implicit flow when we wrote the code for an implicit flow in an earlier video. Just to refresh your memory, here's the implicit flow video link. It's also in the description, and this is the video that we wrote the code in for the implicit flow. Now, I saved this access token. It is an expired access token. I'm going to pull it out. Obviously, this is expired, so the OAuth server should tell me that this is expired, which it will, which is good on the part of Facebook in this case. And though the OAuth specification mandates that the OAuth server implementations issue an expiry on the access token as Facebook does implement it right. It's the onus of the OAuth server implementation to make sure that the access tokens expire and data is not doled out. So in this first instance, I'm just going to make a re request using this old expired access token, but not using the same JavaScript client, using a different client. And I will show you that Facebook will issue an error message saying the access token is no longer valid in its own language, but it will not have any idea of who the application that is requesting the data is, because the OAuth framework specification clearly states that there is no correlation ID between the OAuth client that got the access token and the access token itself. So I'm going to pull out Fiddler and make a request to the authorization, sorry, to the resource server URL on Facebook, which is graph dot facebook.com slash me with this access token and I'm going to request the same fields that are in scope we requested for the public profile for as a scope for this access token so I'm going to request for the name of the user the first name the last name and email and if you look at the response we get a bad request HTTP status code this is Facebook's way of saying this token is expired and it's a very stale token. Now, this token is at least three weeks old, I think, and it was valid only for about two hours approximately. If I tried using it, and I did try using it after two hours, and the error message I got was a different one than the one you're seeing just now, the error message explicitly stated that the token has expired. Now, since this is almost three weeks or maybe even four weeks, I don't remember the exact time, old, the message has changed and probably Facebook has deleted even the archived access tokens that were expired. Now I will make a fresh request using the implicit flow and get a fresh valid access token. Then I'll use this access token to make a request using a different client. I'll use Fiddler again 
and use this access token to get the same data. And you'll see that I was able to get the same data. Now I will use the same access token with a different client, this time a console app that I wrote. It's a simple console app, you can look at the code. It's just a main function that has the base URL and these two parameters, access token and fields. I make a full query with the base URL and the parameters and this function simply attaches the query string parameters to the end of the URL. I did a coding demo on how you can get a list of videos from a YouTube playlist. This is roughly the same code. If you haven't looked at that video, there's a link in the description and this is the video that I'm talking about. So I just simply construct a full URL and issue a get request to that URL and print out the JSON string as it is without any fancy formatting. If there's an error, I print out the exception message. And if I run this code again, you will see with the valid access token, I am able to get the data. Now let me try with a valid access token to get more fields than the scope allows. I'll go back to Fiddler and add another field, the user birthday, and try to see if using a valid access token, but with a limited scope, can I get more fields than the scope allows? And apparently I cannot, which is again good on the part of Facebook, but these are holes that any implementation of OAuth servers should be aware of. And so the best practices for implementing an OAuth server, if you were to list some based on the observations we just made are, number one, always make sure that expired access tokens don't work. Number two, make sure that the fields being requested are within the scope of the access token. Number three, make sure that the request is on a secure channel like HTTPS. And as a server, this is a moot point and a design decision, but do you want any client to be able to use this access token or do you want the request for data coming in from a whitelisted set of URIs? Now, some implementers like Google have a whitelist. They have an origin, script origin server, and they have a redirect URI whitelist. While Facebook does have a redirect URI whitelist, it doesn't have any origin whitelist. So this is again a design decision. The OAuth server, the OAuth framework specification does not dictate that you should have this correlation ID, but just taking security into consideration, it's a good idea as a designer of an OAuth server that you have some kind of a whitelist to restrict the origins of the get requests for your resource server data. Uh, again, this is a design decision. There's no right or wrong. There's no white or black. If you place this restriction, it limits the number of, uh, of your own legitimate clients that can, that can access data uh, because every time you have to register each client and you cannot have dynamic clients. But then if you do have this restriction, it gives you a secure experience. So again, it's a design decision. But the thing to bear in mind from all this is an access token is to be guarded.